Bears are large, four-legged mammals that have a unique status in pop culture. They are not quite as cuddly as dogs or cats, not quite as dangerous as wolves or mountain lions, but they are decidedly ever-compelling objects of fear, admiration, and even envy. With some minor exceptions, all eight bear species have roughly the same appearance. Large torsos, stocky legs, narrow snouts, long hair, and short tails. With their plantigrade postures, walking upright on two feet, bears walk flat-footed on the ground like humans, but unlike most other mammals. Many species from the animal kingdom share similar traits and resemble one another to a certain degree even though there are plenty of dog breeds and they vary in shape and size. A few closely resemble bears in their facial expression and body build, like Newfoundlands or St. Bernard dogs. Some people may question whether it's just a coincidence, or are the two species somehow related to each other? It may seem like a strange question, but it makes sense when you think about it. Dogs and bears kind of look similar, and in their evolutionary history, are they related more than the average person knows? Well, thankfully, science has some great answers on the history and classification of many Earth's animal species. All questions involving if a species is related to another species hinges on evolutionary history. Essentially, what people are asking is, how far back do these two species share a common ancestor? The evolutionary study allows us to look back in time through a few different methods and put puzzle pieces together, giving us a bigger picture of the genetic heritage that all living creatures share. If you go back far enough, all living things share an ancestor. There are a few ways that humans have studied different species' interrelatedness. The most popular one is by fossil evidence. The second and more important way that we can look at shared evolutionary history is through DNA. DNA evidence allows us to look back in time with relative certainty and see how close things are related. When two species share incredibly similar DNA, it's likely that they are closely related and have a not-too-distant common ancestor. To understand relatedness on an evolutionary scale, it's important to understand the grouping system that humans utilize to make sense of things. Taxonomy is simply the science of naming organisms and grouping them into related categories. Imagine taxonomy as a pyramid with the most general, most encompassing definitions being at the top, and the most specific, most detailed definitions being near the bottom. For example, the Six Kingdoms, which is the second most general group, includes plants, fungi, animals, and more. The most specific classification, species, includes closely related things like polar bears, grizzly bears, or black bears. At some point in history, probably the Middle Eocene epoch, some 47 million years ago, a great evolutionary split occurred. The animals in the order Carnivora branched off into two suborders, the Feliformia and the Caniformia. The animals in the Feliformia group have shorter snouts, retractable or semi-retractable claws, and walk on their toes. In short, these animals are cat-like, and their ranks include tigers, lions, and the savage house cat. Meanwhile, the Caniformia group includes animals with non-retractable claws, long jaws, and less specialized teeth. This group is a bit more diverse, but they're all considered dog-like. In it, you'll find wolves, foxes, raccoons, and yes, dogs and bears. Why did this split occur? It was likely due to the fact that animals in both groups found themselves in different feeding niches, which means that they had different food available to them in their respective environments. This may seem like a simple thing, but it made all the difference in the world as far as creating dissimilarities between the two groups. There's one key difference between the two groups that caused them to look and act in contrasting manners. Members of the Feliformia are usually obligate carnivores, meaning they only eat meat, whereas animals in the Caniformia are facultative carnivores, which means their diets are a little more diverse. As a result, both dogs and bears will eat more than just meat. They'll scavenge for food or even eat fruits and other plants in a pinch. 
Meat is still by far their preference. Unlike cats, though, they're fully capable of processing plant matter and can derive important nutrients from it. That's why their noses are longer and their claws don't retract. They need to sniff out food that's buried underground, and they may need to dig up dirt to get it. Now, to get to the immediate question at hand, how closely related are dogs and bears? Sorry to disappoint you, but bears and dogs are not directly related. They're entirely different species that evolved from distinct biological families. Dogs are part of the Canidae family, which includes species like foxes, dingoes, and coyotes. Meanwhile, bears are part of the Ursidae family. Relatives in this family include polar bears, pandas, and other distinctly bear-like animals. While they may look similar, there's not a direct relationship between bears and dogs. The two can't breed to create a new hybrid animal, which debunks a common myth about their relationship. In fact, the two animals don't even share the same number of chromosomes. However, Dogs and bears are both within the suborder Caniformia. Many species within this order have non-retractable claws and are generally omnivorous. Within the suborder Caniformia, nine families currently exist. So, if you are comparing bears and dogs based on their suborders, they are closely related. In short, dogs and bears are related by suborder, but their families and species differ. Overall, dogs, Wolves and bears are related by their suborder and have a shared ancestor that isn't all that distant. Now that we understand some of the basics of evolutionary relatedness, let's look at the most recent common ancestor that bears and dogs share. This ancestor was the precursor to both bears and wolves, dogs, as well as a few other families. As it turns out, their common ancestor is basically a land otter, known as meocids. These were carnivores that fed on smaller animals, although their teeth were not as developed as those of dogs and bears. The species connecting bears and dogs lived on Earth about 55 million years ago and spent their time mostly in forests. Around 25 million years ago, when the climate started to change and dry out, the little creatures faced problems with habitat loss. That's when evolution took matters into its hands, and dogs diverged from the main group. They had to adapt to a different type of prey, which lived in the open plains. It explains the overall growth, longer limbs, bigger teeth, and ears, as well as speed gain and different hunting techniques. Bears separated from the family later, and although they went through a very similar evolution, they had to adapt to slightly different habitats and prey. The early short-faced bear, whose remains were found in North America, was twice the size of modern bears, with a lighter build, longer legs, and feet shaped for fast running. Meocids are the basis for all modern carnivores, and likely preyed on anything smaller than they were. As these meocids spread, they began to specialize in their ecological niches. In Africa, where felines developed, the abundance of meat and herd animals likely allowed them to evolve into the super predators that we know as lions and leopards. In North America and Europe, the need for a more diverse diet led to more omnivorous animals, like what we see with bears, dogs, and otters. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.